Yes, my name is Charles Williams. Last name is spelled W I L L I A M S. Yes, uh, the reasoning behind the Amber Alert uh, is that uh, back in 1996, there were a lot of children that were being uh, kidnapped and abducted, and it seems like uh, all of the, uh, the, the responses or the results of the kidnappings were that uh, these children were coming up with, uh, with tragic ends. Um, before before the incident in Texas that had taken place with uh, Amber Hagerman, the uh, there was a situation out in California that had taken place with uh, with a couple of other uh, young girls. And so when it happened in Texas, which at the time I lived in Fort Worth, Texas, and this situation happened in Arlington, Texas, uh, me being the father of four daughters, you got to know that that really kind of struck a chord with me because. This is something that had been going on, but nothing had seemingly been done about. And so um, as a response to that, uh, I did what I always do, which is to pray uh, first. And um, uh, over that weekend, Amber came up missing that Saturday. And uh, over that weekend, that Sunday, um, after spending much time in prayer, uh, I just, you know, I woke up Monday morning with this ideal that just may help because at the time back in 1996 uh, Brandy what was going on was that uh, the police departments were keeping this information uh, into the you know like uh, in-house or interdepartment uh, 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 communications and really uh, by the time the people uh, learned about it it was like on the late evening news the five or six o'clock or your eleven o'clock newscast and so if we heard it then and so um, I called a re local radio station in the uh, Arlington, Texas area. And uh, it's a country and western station now, WBAP. I contacted them and I spoke with the talk show host who was on the air. And at the time, Police Chief D. Anderson was there with the uh, talk show host. And uh, I shared with them. I was the first one to call in on that Monday morning. And, uh, you know, when something significant happens in your life, you know, you remember exactly where you were, what you were doing, what you had on, you know, on that day. But um, uh, anyway, I called the station and I shared with them. I said, hey, what would happen if just like every time a tornado or bad weather is coming into the area, y'all interrupt the TVs with these uh, emergency broadcast alerts and everything, and everybody knows almost this t down to the street as to where this uh, uh, tornado is heading. And so I said, what would happen if we would use that type of system as it relates to abducted children? I said, instantly. It would put eyes on every corner because here's the deal. Police can't be on every corner, okay? But as soon as you send out a broadcast alert about a missing child, I mean everybody on, on everybody in a car or that's listening to a radio will begin to look around for that particular one child. And that's how it all got started. The reaction that I got, it was uh, it was kind of mixed. The people who saw me there on my job uh, at the time, and it was a call from work, and we had a policy about no phone calls, and I did get into a little bit of trouble about that. Um, but uh, by and large, um, the, uh, the, the community, and I don't forget the talk show host, and Dee Anderson said, you know what? He said, that sounds so simple, but it's, that's something that would most likely work, and um, the uh, the process, and, and that's all that I did, and the the process of it. Uh, D. Anderson later uh, went to a, a a meeting with law enforcement officials that was held there in the same building uh, of the radio station there, and uh, he shared this little this little bitty ideal. Um, and, and just shared that, hey, you know what, why don't we give this a try? I think this will most likely work. And long story short, they took it, they took that ideal, put legs to it, and uh, they continued to 
uh, just uh, expand and to share. And then after a while, we started getting results in Texas that the other country, I mean, that other uh, other states, rather, were, uh, uh, were desiring. And so uh, California flew into Texas and other people began to fly into Texas uh, from around the country to see how it was Texas was getting the results that other states were not. Well, now we now know that the Amber Alert is, is now uh, in all 50 states and in uh, several other countries throughout the world today. Wow. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, no, the name came up uh, by the uh, Texas Association of Broadcasters. It was a number of them who uh, got together because there was a lot, a lot of uh, media that came together. The uh, program directors in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, they all came together. And out of their uh, brainstorming, if you will, uh, is my understanding as to how the actual name Amber Alert uh, came forth. But as far as them putting a name to the concept that was introduced, you know, that's something in which they did. Now, I kind of, I sit back after that because, you know, when you do something like this, you don't really know that something is going to, you know, catch on or, or carry off. You just share what's on your heart and, and you just kind of, you know, go on. And that's what I did. And uh, it wasn't until about, uh, about some, maybe a, a few years later, about three or four years later, that I learned what had happened, and I found out that they were looking for me, and they could not find me because uh, they were getting ready to, you know, to announce it to the country, and they could not find me. Well, when they found me, those who remembered said, oh, yes, this is the guy who called because, you know, it was on this day and at this time and so forth, and so that's, you know, that's kind of how things kind of you know, uh, developed. And so I am, I am very, very proud today to see that how the Amber Alert has mushroomed uh, to its present day form. And I do want to say this. I never do an interview without just saying that it's, you know, this is all about me. This is all about me. No, no. There are a number of people who uh, Donna Norris uh, uh, and her, her son, Ricky and others, uh, they, Everybody has played their part in this, but only one person came up with the concept that allowed others to build up on, and I'm the person who came up with the concept. And so, you know, also talk a little bit about, you know, this, this will turn ultimately because you have, have more dollars and you obviously kind of hit home for you. I'm sorry, could you repeat yourself? Yes, that is absolutely correct. Uh, I have four daughters, and uh, you know I, I'm a very uh, protective father of my four daughters. I'm I'm very uh, uh, integral in their lives, and um, I just you know it's it's almost like this. I put myself in their position, as if to say. What would I do? How would I respond if this was my daughter? And I'm going to tell you, uh, to be honest, they probably would have had to lock me up somewhere because I would have raised a fit to get, you know, to get the law enforcement community or whomsoever uh, looking for my missing child uh, as best as they possibly could. And so that's, that's what really... Um, that's what really uh, uh, resided within me. I know my daughters and, you know, being a father of that young back then, uh, my daughters had little friends and I could just, you know, it, you know, so many thoughts run through your mind, okay, during, during those times. Okay, and what is your station again now? WBNG in Binghamton. Biggington, New York. Thank you so very much. And uh, anything that we can do, I would just like to share with your uh, with your listeners there or your viewers there to uh, simply, uh, anytime you hear of an Amber Alert, please take the time to stop, look around, 
and see if something doesn't look right. Because there's a pretty good chance if it doesn't look right, it's probably not right. Thank you so very much, WBNG. Thank you. Okay. We'll have this posted up for you in about 30 minutes, okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Now, God bless now. Bye-bye.